Hello and welcome to some more Dota 2 action. This is Leo Gangster coming on at you and today we have an absolutely wonderful match here in the Face It Pro League North America. Uh, let me do a quick little check to make sure that... Yes, all of my mic settings are in order. We're ready to go. This game is going to be occurring um, and I'm really excited for this one. We've got a whole bunch of people here, uh, big popular players uh, from all over the world and uh, I think that, you know, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good match. I can already tell. It's going to be absolutely lovely. Um, I'll do a player introduction, but you can see their names right over here on the right-hand side. And uh, just waiting for that, those first couple picks here to see what they're going to end up going for. Sand King Ban. Very, very interesting. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that got banned out, if I'm going to be completely honest. Apparently, PPD is just not a fan of that. Um, and obviously, this is one of those things where this is an in-house league between professional players who play against each other all the time. And uh, maybe PPD knows something about Zai that we don't and uh, his secret Sand King ambitions. Um, the Tusk ban out, I think, makes a decent amount of sense here. Uh, I've been watching a couple of these FPL matches, and Universe has played uh, Tusk in, I think two out of the three matches of his that I've watched. Um, apparently he's, he's sort of starting to like that hero a little bit. And honestly, I think Tusk is one of those heroes that's just absolutely um, tons of fun to play. He can uh, really completely uh, demolish in the early game if you end up to, uh, starting out with a good start to him. So um, very, very cool there. Um, well, not cool because they ended up banning him out, but no big deal. We'll have to see a different offlaner play this game. Uh, also not going to be seeing Clockwork this game. Uh, gets banned out as well. Um, um, I think that we've been seeing a lot of uh, clockwork recently in professional Dota, mainly because of the way that games have ended up going recently in terms of uh, their span, the, the the not going to super duper long term games like it was in, uh, I think, 6.83. You know, you saw a lot of games where the comeback gold meant that as long as you held on and as long as you were able to hold on to a lead, you were going to be able to come back. Um, and, and, and kind of, uh, if you lived throughout the course of a team fight and were able to be there towards the end, uh, for all the kills happening, um, you were going to get a whole lot of gold. So, oh my God, winter wyvern picked up, man. Oh man. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit here, but, uh, I think that, you know, along with bounty hunter as well, these types of heroes that, uh, get off to an early lead fast start are becoming more, uh, viable in this meta. And I think that's really cool. Always just to be able to open up a new avenue of the game and be able to see new and cool things pop out. Um, Leshrac first pick here, absolutely no surprise. He is one of those heroes that I feel like we are going to be seeing throughout this patch and probably into the next one. All of the buffs that he's received, um, even all the way back as far as 6.82 when he got, you know, the reduction in mana cost for Pulse Nova. Like, it, uh, I think that that hero is in a really good spot right now, um, potentially verging on the brink of overpowered. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, hard pressed to, to say that that particular phrase um, overpowered, but it, it's one of those for with Lesh where you kind of feel like it might be might be worth it. Shadow Fiend picked into Leshrac is very interesting to me, um, mainly because I feel like Lesh is one of those heroes that in the mid lane can really. Uh, completely dominate somebody and has a lot of potential for early kills. Um, if you are not careful in the lane, I think that Lesh can absolutely, uh, you know, you catch um, a Shadow Fiend slightly overextended with a Lightning Storm, end up following it up with a Split Earth. You get that uh, slow duration, not super long, but enough for the uh, the little uh, cast stun delay to, to kick in. It's three point or point three five stun delay uh, with a 0.7 stun at level one. Now, I think that in terms of how they might try and uh, switch up Lesh within the next couple patches here, if we end up seeing like a 6.84 B. I believe we saw an A already. Um, I think that B would be the next thing coming up. Queen of Pain. Oh man. All right. So very interesting. Huh. I'm kind of wondering if the Winter Wyvern pickup here, by the way, for the Shadow Fiend was uh, potentially trying out a new strat for keeping this hero alive. Because one thing to keep in mind as well is that Diabolic Edict is physical damage. And with that, uh, with that Cold Embrace, you end up 
completely getting rid of the cold or of the uh, physical damage. That being said, Lesh played mid tends to not get uh, a level of Diabolic Edict um, unless you're trying to take down a tower early or something like that. But um, the Queen of Pain picked up. This could be in the place of a mid Lesh. So, so this could be a Queen of Pain mid with a Lesh offlane or probably more likely is going to be a Lesh mid with the Queen of Pain off. Um, both of these heroes somewhat versatile. Uh, I've been see, I've seen Lesh run a lot in aggressive tri lanes as well. Um, I've seen him run in solo off lanes. Uh, he just has a ton of different options and abilities. So we see a Nyx Assassin band on out, as well as a uh, Lion. So several of the more uh, proficient ganking heroes have been banned out at this point. I'm curious if they're going to opt to try and ban out a Clinx as well. He's one of those heroes uh, that can also uh, sneak up on you and just you know deal a lot of damage, end up taking you down real quick. And uh, that's not what you are going to want if you're a Leshrac trying to farm up stacks that you're... Uh, your supports have so graciously farmed for you, excuse me, stacked for you. Um, but we'll see. It's still a lot of different options, a lot of things that you might want to be worried about. And, um, you know, I was taking a look before the game, and they, they, a lot of these same players right here ended up playing in the game that just happened. Um, there might still be a little bit of uh, ill feelings and ill will. Um, I believe that last time, uh, the group up here on the Dire ended up uh, taking an early lead and just sort of steamrolling throughout the course of the game. I didn't watch the whole thing, though, so um, don't take me at my complete word. Darkseer picked up next as well um, for the bands out of the Dire. It looks like they're a little bit worried about, uh, you know, the potential. That's an interesting band to me because Darkseer can either be used very much in a uh, aggressive situation himself, trying to take down towers early, or you can use him in a more defensive role as well. And part of me thinks that with the Darkseer ban out, they might try and opt for a more aggressive uh, early push strat. And so don't be surprised here out of the Radiant to see something banned out, you know, a la Shadow Shaman or um, probably an Earthshaker would be the bet though here. You don't want to go up against, uh, you don't want to be a Shadow Fiend going up against an Earthshaker. That being said, they do have the first pick, so they could potentially um, pick up the Earthshaker here instead and ban out something else that they might want to deal with. Uh, Earthshaker does get banned out, so it looks like they don't want to pick him up. They're opting for some other strategy. And uh, I, I guess that the you know, the thought here in my head is that maybe they're trying to keep the Shadow Fiend in the mid position and have Winter Wyvern be the one that's sort of there to be able to uh, do the counter initiation with the Splinter Blast potentially or the uh, the Arctic Burn in conjunction with it. Um, you know, I, I feel like Winter Wyvern, uh, when you play the hero correctly, you tend to go 1-2-1. Um, one, uh, by level four, just to be able to, you know, and then continuing to max out Splinter Blast and getting your ulti. Um, but there's a lot of potential for Winter Wyvern and Counter Initiation. Io picked up. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess then with the uh, Earthshaker banned out, they didn't want to have to go up against that um, with the potential for the early ganks, like an Earthshaker, Leshrat gank mid. All Lesh needs is level 2, and uh, that is a dead Shadow Fiend. Um, so instead, opting to uh, go for the Io instead of it. Very, very interesting. I think Shadow Demon is a really great pickup here in light of that. You're going to have Io relocating on top of uh, your your respective heroes and having a shadow demon there to be able to you know disrupt for just a little while um punch picked up next by the radiant all right okay <laughs> we're uh we're gonna be seeing some things this game um no doubt about that now the one thing that this does bring up that we could potentially start seeing is uh the pudge relocate uh glitch well not glitch necessarily uh, i'll call it a glitch the pudge io relocate glitch where if you are relocating in in as an IO um, or relocating back to found to try and save somebody if Pudge hooks you and the hook is returning as you are relocating back out he will hook you across the map and bring you back to fountain um, Wraith King ends up getting picked out I'm wondering if that was a random I don't know if it was or not I thought I saw the timer go down to nothing let's see if chat if anything starts breaking out here no, they might have actually picked that up. Um, okay. Well, it's very clear what their core is going to be. Um, looking like we're going to see a Spirit Breaker ban out by the uh, Radiant, not wanting to have to deal with uh, 
sort of more charges coming in from across the map at them. Um, man, oh man. So they're going to need, I guess Pudge can serve as kind of a tank here, but they're going to need something to, uh, to sort of deal more damage here besides just the Shadow Fiend, I feel like. Or maybe some more crowd control. I guess they're planning on the Winter Wyver being a lot of their crowd control and trying to... Well, they so they have a lot of team fight here for the Radiant. Um, I think that Beastmaster would have been an okay pickup there, the ability to crowd control with that big old roar. Um, so I, I kind of feel like they need a little bit more. Something potentially funky like a, a Tide maybe. Um, if you put the Shadow Fiend safe with the Pudge mid, uh, that's one possibility. A Tiny could be okay here. Um, I'm very interested what they're going to go for because they kind of need damage and they kind of need control. I feel like Tiny could be okay. Um, I don't know. What else would, might there be? Um, honestly, a uh, an Earthshaker carry. Why not? <laughs> you could do a, a core Earthshaker with this lineup and it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But unfortunately, they've already banned them out. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's such a weird draft. The other thing is that you've got to be aware that the Shadow Demon can disrupt somebody if you are, like, tossing out a big ulti. Um, and also, Shadow Demon's pretty good against Tiny. Bristleback, okay. So they're opting for less control and more just getting up in your face, pushing down towers. Um, well, put getting up in your face and, and, and relocating in with Io. The Broodmother pickup. Man, oh man, what is this game? I don't even know. It started out looking so normal, and then it just quickly devolved into uh, ridiculousness. And man, oh man, am I excited. I uh, I absolutely cannot wait, and um, I think that this is going to be a really cool matchup here. All right, all right, all right. Uh, waiting for the Bristleback player to get on in, and uh, we'll get started right away. So taking a look at the Radiant team, we have Zai who's going to be playing Wisp, we have YS on the Shadow Fiend, Yugi is going to be playing your Pudge, we've got Jeppins on the Bristleback, and last but not least, Mr. Demon on the Winter Wyvern. For the Dire team, we have Arteezy here who's going to be playing the Lashrak, we've got PPD on the Shadow Demon, we've got Universe who's going to be playing the Broodmother, um, Ensoe, Ensoe is going to be playing the, uh, the Queen of Pain, and Pixley Leader is going to be playing your Wraith King. Have a little bit of a shout out there from Fear coming on in. <laughs> Looks like we've got a uh, second time Winter Wyvern here on the Demon. Super excited! It's an in-house league, man. That's what you—that's uh, what you came to do. This is why it's happening. Um, and we're going to be already seeing a uh, nice little Observer Ward placed on down here for the Radiant. Um, another one placed on over here for the uh, Dire as well. So they're going to scout each other out a little bit at this point. Yugi has not uh, opted to level up anything yet. They do have the Shadow Fiend Demon there. And they're going to end up catching him a little bit here with the Rot. Expect to see the Disruption one time. The Slow coming out. Is it going to be enough to get him away? Yes, looks like it is. And uh, they're going to be able to step on out. That being said, Dire is back on over here as well. Lesh was not quite able to catch the split earth but now wraith can come in on it as well with the body block one time as well as a wraith fire if he so wants it this is really not where you want to be if you're mr zai he is running away into uh the dire base apparently um might be trying to draw them away so that way he can uh, zip on back into pudge but that is going to be first blood going the way of uh of the wraith king that's not what you want at all second blood zai ends up going down to the uh queen of pain gg ends up getting called it was an absolute pleasure casting for you guys um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's get on into the game here. <laughs> Let's see now. Last hit. They take the, both the runes as well. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, was that true? Yeah, they both, the Queen of Pain and Wraith can get it. This is going to be rough. Um, looks like they are opting to go for an aggressive tri lane here with Pudge and Wisp. Unfortunately, you really don't want to start those aggressive tri lanes out with uh, two deaths, and this might be a third here as well. Split Earth comes down. They're going to body block him in a little bit. Demon ends up going down here. Very unfortunate. Yugi is taking a lot of damage here. He might be able to take out this Wraith King. No, Io takes him out in the end. Going to try and uh, tether up 
to the creeps as well, dealing a decent amount of damage here. Look out, world. Here he comes. Mr. Io with the double kill potentially. No, PPD ends up taking him out. Oh my god, that was freaking crazy. Um, and unfortunately, Demon does not quite have the ability to uh, go into Arctic Burn form one more time to be able to take down that Shadow Demon. He is just going to try and tango on up, get out of there ASAP. He is going to toss on out a uh, salve there as well. So RTZ being a nice guy, um, helping him out there in the end. In the mid lane so far, though, it does look like uh, the Queen of Pain is 3-1 and one versus the, um, uh, what is it? Four and one. Okay, so four and one to four and two. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. The nice little trash talk is wonderful. This is what you love about these in-house leagues, honestly, is that, you know, they're able to uh, to have a decent amount of fun throughout the course of a game. Fear doing a, excuse me, not fear, universe, different player. <laughs> Having a decent time up here against Jeppins is worth noting with the two points in the quill spray. Should be able to uh, pretty effectively deal with these spiders, I would imagine. Um, I'm curious where this is going to end up turning out. If if uh, Jeppins is able to get a, a decent amount of farm off from the spiders, I almost feel like it might have been worth it for Universe to go for the more points in incapacity and bite or holding back skill points, uh, waiting for the chance at a kill. I don't know. We'll see. Nonetheless, uh, Demon and Yugi here are going to be able to uh, pull the creep wave on over, I would have thought. Oh no, it was really unfortunate there. This is really not looking good. Soul Catcher down, Splinter Blast out, not going to be enough. Wraith King ends up getting the kill there in return. Demon trying to run away. Three heroes here is not at all where he wants to be. Ends up getting caught by the Lightning Storm, as well as the Wraith Fire Blast. Is going to end up dying. Is it going to be enough, though, to get the kill? No, unfortunate Courier there didn't end up going down as well. Uh, we do have the Pudge coming on in. Is able to catch PPD with the hook very nicely dies i needs just one more point but disruption there to ensure that the courier is able to get away very very nicely done he does end up dying for it though so his death at the cost of a or yeah his his life for the cost of a courier staying alive probably worth it probably worth it meanwhile in the mid lane yet again we see that the shadow fiend is up above the queen of pain not by a whole hell of a lot but a little bit slightly noticeable 16 and 4 to 13 and 3 so uh doing a pretty good job over there bristleback is the leader in cs at the moment 21 and 3 to 20 uh and 1 so doing okay there as well, but this is the part where Brood starts to really start taking over. Being able to go on into the jungle and just farm that on out uh, is super duper effective. Catching Arteezy with the last little Splinter Blast, unfortunately wasn't quite able to get the hook off. Yugi is going to have to back on out at this point. Zai and Demon doing their best to keep this Pudge alive. What a weird little lineup here. The Pudge is 10 and 1, um, but if you compare that, well, 6 and 2 to the Lesh, it's not bad. Um, honestly, it's going okay for them. The big thing is that how well do these heroes scale as you get further into the game? It's going to come down. Oh my god. So, so uh, well done there by Zai to be able to uh, ensure that that Queen of Pain didn't get anything that she wanted there. Um, does have three wand charges as well as a decent stack of tangos there. There, should be able to get away from there absolutely no problem ppd getting gone on a little bit here as well demon splinter blast up again if he just wands and uses it i think that ppd is dead um no not quite enough he only has it at level one at this point i am mistaken unfortunately there and opting to keep those stick charges around just in case he needs to uh toss out one last one before he ends up dying uh and maybe keeps him alive a little bit longer as well jeppins once again needs to be careful over here there's a lot of things going on um he is tossing this onto Arteezy, I saw, though, and not onto this range creep, unfortunate. Uh, so it doesn't mean... Oh, going in a little bit. Is able to rot him down ever so slightly. Needs one more hook there to be able to get it. Is he going to catch PPD? Not sure. They do have the ward in the area as well. Arteezy tosses out the Splinter Blast to keep his buddies alive. Uh, wants to run around this time. Soul Catcher still on him, but not quite. Smokes on up to ensure that he doesn't end up getting taken out. Very nicely done there. Broodmother rotating on over to the mid lane as well. Um, haven't seen that before on a Brood mother that might be the next thing that i need to try when i'm playing brood is if you're going up against a shadow fiend why not rotate on over deny him his access to this medium camps here and potentially even steal him from him man oh man i'm gonna start doing that as brood mother um because like sure you're giving bristleback somewhat free farm here but the flip side of that is that your shadow fiend where a lot of your real damage is going to come from is not going to be able to uh get as much as he might otherwise want let's take a look at net worth currently he is uh up there with the bristleback but brood right there with him as well queen of pain not that far behind also 
So this is normally the point in the game where Shadow Fiend would be able to stack up camps, go on in and uh, really sort of do whatever he wants in the jungle, um, as well as putting pressure on other lanes sort of passively, able to take him down. The uh, rotation comes on in from the Shadow Demon. Queen of Pain ends up taking out Io, though, in the top lane um, and is able to take the Invis Rune off the back of that as well. So two kills coming on out for the Dire onto the Radiant, um, having a little bit of trouble dealing with the uh, the combination of the Lesh and the, uh, the, Lesh and the Shadow Demon. Demon. Pretty cool combo there, if you really think about it. Because the other thing that's neat about it is that, you know, Lesh obviously does want a decent amount of farm Wraith King, able to kill the Pudge as well up top, and then get away like it ain't no thing. Three point or two points in Wraith Fire Blast, and I think that he actually opted for stats off the back of that as well. Um, really, really cool there. So yeah, this is the moment. They're going to come on in. They recognize this is what Shadow Fiend's doing. Um, they're going to catch him off the back of this. Well, PPD is up there. Um, okay, yeah, and I was, <laughs> I was coming on in, and uh, at that point, Shadow Demon's going to try and win. Like, oh my god, missing kills up top. Lesh Wreck ends up taking out the Winter Wyvern. I'm the worst. I'm the absolute worst. Is able to catch, though. Ah, uh, it needs to be careful against this Lesh. Is he going to end up taking him down? Not sure. Oh, the Jukes for days. Is it going to be enough, though? Don't know. Has another hook in three. Also has Rot a little bit <laughs> frustrated Mr. Arteezy gonna try and deny himself to creep misses the hook is he gonna be able to get away oh my god he just might be able to wands on up also oh god Io wants the kill they all want the kill but they're not gonna be able to get it look at the jukes y'all um and Zai is diving deep for this one thinks he's in the woods unfortunately he's not wisp is gonna end up getting taken out here I don't think he lives through this the creeps are chasing him he's got a TP coming on in this was not the play y'all <laughs> <laughs> um, get the rotation from the Queen of Pain. Arteezy is just goading his way on back to base at this point. He don't give a damn. Look at him gallop. It is beautiful. Um, and so now a rotation coming over in the mid lane. This looks like Shadow Fiend's going to end up going down here as well. Very nice to take him out. Broodmother ends up getting the kill there in the end. Demon trying to apply that uh, extra little bit of damage to PPV as much as he can. But um, I think that he's going down as well. Uh, Splinter Blast is pretty good, but not sure if it's good enough. Spiders end up getting the kill there in the end. Jeppin's getting taken down also here. Wraith Fire Blast out one time. Also see the Split Earth on top of him. 3 to 15. This is not where you want to be. This is not who you like to be. GG well played. Ends up getting called from Arteezy. A little bit of casual flaming is always wonderful. We'll see if he tosses a hook for a spider or if the spider's just going to deny it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's frustrating. <laughs> oh my god. What a what a game! Um, Eighteen kills at eight and a half minutes on into it. It's uh, it's been pretty fun. Um, been seeing some uh, some some very interesting plays out from both sides, and I think that uh, every single time you get to see something new and exciting, it is uh, it's worth it. Also worth noting at this point, Io doesn't even have six yet. Uh, if he's able to get six pretty soon here, I think that they're going to be able to make a return. But really, what needs to happen is they're going to need to go on in with Bristleback. The Bristleback kill mid was absolutely huge. On top of that, Shadow Fiend going down. Like, Shadow Fiend is now own one. Um, that one kill on him, though, really completely crippled this farm here. Um, so we'll see. I feel like they're in a position to win it if they play it outright. Um, but it's really going to depend upon them, you know, doing uh, doing what they need to do. It is going to toss off the bottle. Thought for a second Lesh might have kept it there, but that would have been a little bit of BM. Universe here is going to cut the creep wave as well. I'm um, just going to pull him on over, give him a little how you doing. Um, he also has his soul ring as well as hand of Midas. That's where things start to get scary. Whole ton of spiders as well. Um, might opt to just dive tower here, and honestly, no, he's just going to farm with him. Probably the smarter move. Uh, you don't need to get too greedy with it, because honestly, if Bristleback ends up getting pretty big, uh, just wait until you end up in a situation where you can bring over shadow demon if you can bring over shadow demon lay down the soul catcher that's all you need um and in the meantime farm away farm away get items get a dagon get orchid get whatever you want it doesn't matter looks like shadow fiend is going to end up getting charged here again he is super dead wasn't even able to clean up any of those spiderlings oh my god the arctic blast though that's a pretty good spell for that that is that's a pretty good spell um so was able to kill the Shadow Fiend at the cost of a few spiders. Absolutely worth it every day of the week. Yugi is getting body blocked through the Wazoo as well. Might be able to take out this uh, Wraith King. No, does not end up working out for him. Wraith King does also have ulti, so that's not going to happen. Shadow Demon ends up getting the kill on Io as well. Man, oh man, is that a rough start to this game. Good game ends up getting called. Not sure if it is going to be legit or not. Yes, does look like it is going to be legit. So short game, sweet game. It was a pleasure. Thank you 
you guys for watching very much, um, and I'll try and pop on into the next one, see if we can cast another one. Uh, you can catch me out at youtube.com slash lyricalgangster, twitch.tv slash lyricalgangster, twitter.com slash lyricalgangster. And for Twitter and Twitch, switch the E with a three. You'll find me for more 10-minute